Hi, I'm Danielle with Lot and L, and today we're going to be doing the Janome HD9 unboxing video. But I think I need a little bit of help first, so I'm going to call my assistant Charlotte of Lot and L to help us today. Hello. Hi, Charlotte. How are you? Good. Good. Are you ready to unbox the sewing machine? Yeah. What are you the most excited for? Sewing it. Sewing what? Jeans, leather. Ooh, all those things? You think this machine can do it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see what we can do. So, first thing, my paper scissors, not sewing scissors, right? Of course. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. Now, I will tell you that when my husband brought this home and he tried to carry it upstairs, um, he may have... Uh, kind of pushed it up a little bit. Kind of messed it up because he kind of dropped it down two stairs. Yeah. You know, trying to carry too many things. But I think the packaging is enough. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it'll hold. Maybe, Maybe it'll hold. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Can you help me with this? All right. All right. So this is literally the first time we were open this. So we're just going to pull open some of the different things out of the box. And you're going to wait for me. Right, assistant? Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, of course, we have all of our uh, legal jargon, right? Yes. Darn oh. those lawyers, huh? And our instruction manual. Very important. Yes. Why don't you put that over there on the side for me, please? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I have them. All right. Now, Charlotte, do you have any idea what this is? No. You have no idea what this is? No. None. None. Maybe it's like a hammer? No, don't you do that. No, definitely not. You know what this is? No. This is a knee lift. Yeah. So you can put it into the front of the machine and it'll hang down by your knee. And that way, when you want to start or stop the machine, or wait, maybe not. Maybe it's just the presser foot. But anyway, you can hit it with your knee and it'll lift the presser foot for you. Okay. How cool is that? Okay, so let's put that on the side, just right here. Just good. All right, let's see what's next. Da, 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 da. What is it? I think. Let's open it up and find out. Ooh, so fancy, fancy. It is the dust jacket to put over the machine. Whenever we're not using it, we can put this oh the cover over it. But this definitely looks like it needs some little flair, right? Yeah. So maybe in a future video, you'll see how we jazz this up to make it really awesome. What do you think, Charlotte? Yeah. Okay. We'll put that down here for right now. All right. Let's see. We got one more thing before we take out the styrofoam. And that is this little box of goodies. Do you have any idea? Tools. Very good. This is our little toolbox. <laughs> so what this has in it, of course, are our bobbins and the screwdrivers, some needles, extra things like that, some oil, very important. Again, you know, this is um, as close to an industrial machine that you can get right now. And um, so we need to take really good care of it. So we wanna make sure that we keep our tools safe, okay? All right, so let's, are you ready to take out the rest of it? Yeah. Okay, let's get rid of, let's get rid of some of that trash. <laughs> All right, now. This might be kind of hard. Oh, wait, wait, wait for it. Ooh. What's this? What is this? Maybe we need some scissors. Some scissors. I meant to say you didn't want to this great. <laughs> All right, let's see. Now that we got that open with some scissors, Charlotte, what do let's we have? Open. I know what this is, but I bet you can't guess. Huh. Is it part of the sewing machine? It is part of the sewing machine. What is the flat part? You're right. What is that called? I don't know. You don't know? It's okay. It's called an extension table. <laughs> you can see this beautiful extension table here. Let me throw away the trash. <laughs> so this extension table comes with the machine, and it's great because as you'll see in a little bit, it's got this extra little cover here so you can have access to the bobbin casing without actually taking off the extension table, yes. okay? 
And of course, since we got the black edition, it's in that shiny black color that we love, right? Yeah. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this machine now out of the box, get this nasty box out of the way, and we'll be right back. All right, so we're back, and it's a good thing you didn't just see what happened because that was a disaster. Yeah. Also, <laughs> doesn't this look shiny? It does look super shiny. I love, love, love this black color. Um, that's why it's called the HG9BE Black Edition. And, um, you know, I really fell in love with this machine when I first saw it um, on some of the videos that Janome had during the pandemic. Um, but I didn't really think that I needed a straight stitch, you know, industrial um, heavy duty machine until I started making a lot of bags with blue Cala patterns. And so, <laughs> uh, so then I decided, man, I really need an HD9. And Mitzi Reed actually said, have you seen the black edition? Uh, and I never had. So I Googled it and voila, here it is. And we saw it at the International Quilt Festival. And luckily the Janome, <laughs> the Janome dealer that was there um, is from Sewing and Vacuum Warehouse here in Houston. They have two locations up in Conroe or in Humble, and um, they had some in stock. So super excited, got a great deal on it, and got to bring this home from the International Quilt Festival. So today what we're going to do is we literally just plugged it in. Yeah. Nothing special yet, but we're going to, let's try to like wind a bobbin and then thread the machine. And so, um, we have literally not done anything yet. So, um, if I mess this up, then you will now know how to correctly do it, um, and learn along with me. Does that sound good, Charlotte? Yeah. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to come around, um, to the other side of the table and let's just work on, uh, how to wind a bobbin and thread the machine and then maybe uh, we can try out some different um, things like yeah. uh, what do you want to try out? Let's try some on pants. Pants. That's right. We've got we did steal some of our my husband's uh, pants. Jeans. 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 We did ask first. Um, so we, we got some jeans. We also have some uh, what's called marine vinyl. And uh, I use this a lot in my bag making. And it's super um, thick and kind of plasticky. Um, and then we have some faux leather here. And then we also will, um, I'll go grab some leather and we can just try it out on the different types of uh, materials here and see how it does. What do you think? Yeah. All so right. So see when it works on our materials that we're getting. That's right. And we'll show them how easy it is, right? Hopefully. Hopefully. It's easy. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay. Okay. So we are back now. Um, and we are going to wind a bobbin. So I've put this, uh, fluorescent colored thread in. Nothing special about it. It just happens to be the brightest thread that I own because <laughs> um, I wanted to make sure that you guys could see what we were doing. So in order to, and we haven't even turned on the machine yet. So um, in order to thread the bobbin, we have these really great uh, metal bobbin um, cases here. So you're going to put your thread up through. So if you can see that up through uh, the notch and pull it through before you place it on the bobbin winder. If you ever forget, there is a diagram up here on how to uh, wind your bobbin. So you wanna make sure that you're following the correct path for your thread. And then we are going to um, put this notch over to the left. And then our bobbin winding button is here, but we might actually need to turn on the machine first. Right, okay, so now our machine is on. Thank you. And Charlotte, would you like to press the bobbin yes, button? Okay, pause it again for me. So what I like to do is I like to let it, um, even normally, is I like to let it wind a little bit as I'm holding the tension on this thread here. And then Charlotte, if you can hand me the scissors, please. Why? Can we, can we, um. Let me have the scissors, please. Can we um, do it up more? These are very okay. sharp. Thank you. They are very sharp. You do need to be careful with them. So I like to stop it after it's wound a little bit and just go ahead and trim that thread off so that I won't have to sit there and hold it and get as it gets wound up. So um, now that I've got a little bit of it started, we can press the bobbin winding button again and go ahead and finish winding our bobbin. 
And you'll see the nice LED lights there. I'm telling us that our bobbin winder is going. So cool. That's you don't need to even turn it off. It'll actually turn off by itself. Oh, impressive, right? Very impressive. Okay, so <laughs> once it's done, you can see that this actually slides back over on the, automatically to the right itself. And then you can lift your bobbin um, off of the stand there. And I'm just going to snip it here and get ready to put this in our bobbin case. Okay, so now that we have our bobbin wound, we are going to insert it into the bobbin case. And again, remember that our extension table has this little opening so that you can get easy access to your bobbin case. So there is a door here that we're gonna flip this part open. And this will actually come off if you want. And then there's another little door, as you saw, that Charlotte just flipped down to the left. And from there, you can reach in and pull out your bobbin case. It's kind of hard to pull it out. But the most important thing is that your feed dogs need to be in the upright position. And so what that means is that you want to make sure that you, you do your needle down, needle up, which is your button here. Um, obviously not when your hands are in there, right? Yes. <laughs> um, and that way that you'll be able to actually reach in there and pull out this bobbin case, okay? And when you put in your bobbin case, for those of you that have a long arm or anything like that, you, you're probably familiar with these bobbin cases. Um, but the way that uh, the way that they go in is actually with the tail of your bobbin going over to the right here clockwise. So you're gonna put that in there and then make sure that your tail comes over to the slit in the bobbin case and you're gonna wanna make sure it pulls up and into the little notch that's in there. It's a little hard to see, um, but that's how your, your bobbin case is in there and your tail can be just left in there. So once you have the bobbin in, in the case, what you'll want to do is to keep this latch open as you slide it in. And there's a little knot, what they call a knob here on the end of the bobbin case. And you'll want that to line up with what they call the rib, which is a little just notch or an opening in uh, the machine itself where the, where the bobbin goes. And so we're gonna try to do that really quick. And there we go, it fits in there nicely and you've got your tail um, off. I'm going to trim it up just a tad bit because I don't like it to be that long. But um, that you'll want to put your case back in. And then once you've got your case back in, you can put your levers all back in place here and close your door. So what the instructions say about threading this machine um, is they recommend a synthetic thread size uh, 20 or 30 weight is what's recommended. Honestly, I can't tell you what this is, but we're just going to give it a shot. Um, and it's, you know, they, they say don't use anything that's 40 weight or finer um, because you're going to be sewing some heavy duty things here. And this machine is a heavy duty machine. It is a heavy duty machine. So as you saw through that time-lapse video, how painful it was for me to thread this for the first time um, without my glasses at some point. So I'm reading the instructions, but I'll give you a close-up now that I've done it and you can see the, the fluorescent thread coming through here. So the, this bar here does have the three um, tension holes here. So I've just wrapped it through the first and the third. And if you ever need more tension, um, like more drag on your thread. You can always loop it through all three. 
but then it comes down through this tension disc here and it comes around through this tension disc here um, around and up under this bar and then you thread it through several more um, through more holes here and here up through uh, all the way up here and then down through here now I did have a little bit of trouble figuring out how to use the needle threader because again, I never even looked at the instructions before when you saw me suffering through it. <laughs> um, but what is happening here is you'll want to put it through this needle guide here, put it around under this uh, guide here. And then what is going to happen is you're going to thread your needle from left to right. And so all that means is that you're going to bring your needle threader down, put it in position, wrap your thread around the back to the front, and then pop this back up and voila, your needle is now threaded. So um, sorry that part was a little bit painful, but hopefully the um, speed of that helped a little bit. But now we've got this all threaded. And so I'm going to invite my little assistant back and we are going to hopefully go through a couple of test materials and just to show you how this works for the first time out of the box. All right, so now we're ready to start with some fabric now that we've got it threaded and we've got a full bobbin in. And what we're going to do is I'm just gonna let Charlotte try it out and that way you can see how good it is um, or how easy it is. And also, why, if you're asking yourself, why wouldn't we start with leather or something else first? Because we wanna test it on something much easier first. We can't just throw leather and act like it's magically work. Right. We, we need to check our tension. We need to make sure that we know how to use the machine before we accidentally screw it up, right? Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, um, we're going to draw up our bobbin thread. And so first things first, we need to turn on the machine probably. Right. That is one thing about threading the machine is they do recommend uh, pressing your needle down, needle up twice to get it in its highest position and then turning the machine off before you start threading it. So that's what we did. And now we're going to turn our machine back on. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is draw up the bobbin thread. And what the instruction manual says is to go ahead and uh, do the needle down, needle up button twice. And there we have our bobbin thread here. So now that our bobbin thread has come up nice and pretty, um, is let's get ready to sew. So Charlotte, if you wanna come over here and let's just test out our tension and see how we're doing on this, okay? Um, so remember, we're gonna have to put our um, presser foot down. If you have the knee lift on, let me just show you where that goes here. Is, do you have the knee lift over there, Charlotte? Um, we put the knee lift. I think it's under those jeans right there. Oh, yes. We'll put this one here. So here is what it looks like. Yep. Here's the knee lift. So if you have this, um, this is actually kind of neat because it's gonna just going to go into your machine um, down here, right <laughs> below the extension table. There's a little slot for it, which we're not going to use it right now. But um, basically what happens is whenever you want to lower or um, lift your presser foot is your knee can kind of press on that and the greater the pressure the higher it'll raise up and go down so um, for those of you that are interested in that I'll have to give that a try later probably um, but let's go ahead and give this a shot at um, our very first um, our first stitches here so we do have a couple of things just to go over really quick before we start sewing. All right, Charlotte, is yeah. first we have our needle up and needle down. So let's go and press that. Red means it's down. Um, so we're going to leave that there. We do have your slide here. If you're familiar with Janome machines, you've got your slide for speed. Uh, since it's our first time, let's leave that on pretty low um, and make sure that that works over here. We have our cut button. And so for... For this button here at the end when we're done, we can just trim those threads off um, if we're not chain piecing. Right here, we have our reverse lever that you'll just hold down if you wanna reverse. And um, you got your stitch length over here on the knob on the side. So right now I just have that on three. 
which is pretty good for right now. And then we've got our, and then we have our tension uh, adjustment right here as well. So let's go ahead and just give this a shot, Charlotte, and um, go ahead and hold your threads a little bit back here so they don't get all jangled up. And go ahead and step on that pedal and see how we do on some regular fabric. Keep going. That's a really high speed. It does. So remember that this is a heavy duty machine and so it can stitch super, super, super fast. Yes. Um, so that again, it's on our slowest speed. Go ahead and press it down, watch your hands, but go ahead and press it down and go all the way off the fabric for us. Perfect. All right, so let's lift our needle up and lift our presser foot up. And let's just take a look at how those stitches look here. I'm not gonna cut them for you because I'm too lazy to pull the bobbin thread up again. So as you can see, the tension on the top looks pretty good. Let's flip it over and look at that perfect. First stitches on this machine and they are absolutely perfect. So we're not gonna make any adjustments right now, but let's see, you know, we're not gonna sew regular fabric on this machine, are we, Charlotte? No. No? Let's try up some of this. So our faux leather here, so let's try that, but um, we should probably maybe like fold it in half and see how we do on half, when it's folded in half. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and put our presser foot down, put our needle down. All right, and let's give that a try and see how that does. Bam, look how easy that is. Now, again, for those of you that have different machines, um, you know, I've got the M7, and the M7 can handle this faux leather wonderfully. Um, but uh, what tends to happen on some other machines that maybe don't have enough pressure um, and enough um, power is that your stitches actually get super, super small because the the material is too thick and may not be able to go under there. So you can see here that this these stitches are actually perfect. So what we're gonna do though is two layers is sometimes not good enough. Sometimes we sew a strap where we'd have um, it folded in half and then half again and half again so that we end up with something like, yeah. I don't know, not just four layers, maybe like this. Eight layers. Eight. Eight layers. Let's try eight layers of this faux leather here. Hold on. I know. It's it is exciting, isn't it, Charlotte? Okay, let go. Right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this under here, and we're going to give it a start. Um, go ahead and put your needle down there, and let's see how it does. Hold on to this with eight layers of this faux leather. Wow. So that literally just powered through that so easy, so fast. Um, and look, the tension is perfect. The stitch, the stitch lengths are consistent. And again, that's just really hard to do on a non-industrial machine. So let's try something else. Um, Maybe this. Good. This is our marine vinyl, and actually I just, I love this color. It kind of has a little bit of a variation. Looks really cool. So let's try this, and again, let's try it and also in several layers. What do you think, Charlotte? Let's do it more than eight layers. Try. More than eight? Whew. Try. You are daring. <laughs> okay, so let's say we're gonna make a strap out of this, and. More than eight. More than eight? Well, see, that's only four. Four. Let's just try, let's try eight, okay? Because that's about as good as I can do right now, even though that's a giant piece, okay? So we're going to put that under there. We're going to put our needle do down. And I can do more. All right, and so let's get ready and see how it does with this eight layers of marine vinyl. Wow. Uh, so as you can see, that stitched through wonderfully. Look how beautiful that is. I mean, that's that's some thick stuff right there. Um, and you can see it's, it's thicker than our eight layers of this faux leather. So it can really handle quite a bit. Uh, the next thing we should try is some jeans, right? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So <laughs> our father's jeans. That's right. So My father's jeans. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, cut off some of this here, Charlotte. And that way we can play with it a little bit. How's that? Play. Okay. So for those of you that do any hemming or garment sewing, or maybe you just like to work with jeans and you really want to um, 
you know, some people make quilts out of jeans. That's cool. Denim is um, really coming back into style for those of us that lived through the 80s. Um, it's now coming back into style. So we do a lot with denim. And, um, you know, when you're making, hold on, hold on. When you're, when you're dealing with denim, you know, you get these, these fairly thick seams, um, that you're going to sew over. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to actually put two of those super thick seams right next to each other. We're going to sew over those. And, um, just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and pile on a couple more layers. What do you think, Charlotte? Yeah. Okay. How much layers is that? I want so this is, that's a great question. Let's go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, nine, 10, 11, you know, plus that, plus that seam has a little bit extra in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually going to sew it this way so that we get the full bulk of those seams. How's and that? And it also has to go up. Don't forget. It that. does. It does. It's going to go, I'm going to hold this for us here. It's going to go over these humps because this is, we're starting on kind of a lower, um, a lower level thickness and we're going to increase our thickness by the time we get over these Careful. seams here. Okay. Go for it. Excellent. You can see it's so, kind of folded. Well, that was here. that was me. I didn't hold it very well. But um, it literally powered through that. So um, obviously I've got a little bit of a stitch uh, length difference here as I wasn't quite prepared <laughs> for the get up and go of it. Um, but it powered through all of those layers of denim no problem. So our last test actually is going to be some leather. And um, this is actually a belt that I have from Italy um, that needs to be sized down a little bit. So um, you can see some, some stitch lines here at the top. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, stitch it more. Sti we're just going to stitch right through this. And this again, isn't as thick, but the material is historically difficult to use on a domestic machine. And so we are going to, um, just go through with our, um, HD nine and see how it handles this leather. Okay. So do it pretty gentle, Charlotte, cause I wasn't quite ready for that last one. Or we can do it super fast. That's cool too. Um, <laughs> But you got to watch out for this girl because she is on fire. Um, but let's see how we did on that. I went ahead and cut that. So as you can see here on leather, stitches are very, back off. Um, this, As you can see on the leather, the stitches are very even. And it went, um, it powered through that with absolutely no problem whatsoever. So I think that you can see that our HD9 is officially unboxed and despite the little hiccups that I had from not reading the directions ahead of time, um, I think it worked pretty well. What do you think, Charlotte? Yeah. And so we will um, start using this right away, probably on a couple bags. And uh, what are you most excited to make, Charlotte, on our HD9? Well... My koala quilt. Your koala quilt? I'm not sure that you need to piece a quilt on the HG9. Yes, I will. But um, maybe we can make a handbag or something that would go with your koala quilt. Yeah, maybe. Oh, that would be cool. So stay tuned to, for more... Um, Lucky is L videos. <laughs> you going to interrupt me? <laughs> it's a lot in L, silly. No, it's a lot in L. All right. Uh, so stay tuned for more Lot and L videos and um, we'll be sure to feature the HD9 again in some of our upcoming projects. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.